Hello, everyone. I'm Jonna Quinn. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations at Quantum Mercy. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And um, Dan's session today, Managing Burnout and um, Compassion Fatigue, uh, is one of our sessions of our new Griffins at Home virtual um, alumni and event series. Um, this series is open to all alumni, faculty, staff, students, friends of the university, whomever would like to tune in and, and just kind of be with us in a time when maybe we can't be together always, um, or we just need something different to take our minds off of things. So I'd like to welcome Dan Jordan. He is our Assistant Director of Counseling Services and has been on Gwena Mercy University staff for 11 years. He's a licensed professional counselor and has agreed to be with us today to lead us in a great discussion um, on how we can manage during these times. So thank you, Dan, for being with us and I will turn over um, the video to him. Thank you so much. Uh, I can say without a doubt, this is a talk that is so timely. Um, and having been through burnout a couple of times myself, uh, I kind of managing all this kind of craziness a little bit better than I think I would if I had never been burned out before. So um, it's very central to what we do as helping professions and anybody who's in a helping profession or anybody who's just kind of finding it really difficult to manage things right now. So um, it's really an important kind of thing. And to illustrate kind of what we're doing today, uh, let's say we shake this bottle. Let's say I take the top off, right? Let's say I shake the bottle. Pretty much what's going to happen is there's going to be water everywhere, right? Um, that's what's going to happen. But if I shake this bottle, and I think you can see the water level is much different. If I shake this, I can do whatever I want with this and nothing's coming out. This is filled with stress. Consider the water level your stress level. This is not a good level to have. That's for sure. You're overwhelmed. You got a lot of stuff and it's just everything on top of everything and there's no management of it at all. This is probably a healthy stress level. You got some stuff, but you're managing it pretty well. So when something comes along, like your car breaks down, you can manage that. Nothing's spilling over. And you can imagine what spillover actually looks like. You can think of easily frustrated, uh, getting snappy, uh, headaches. Uh, you can think of all different kinds of ways that your stress level spills over in things that are not really healthy for you at all. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about how to manage that kind of stuff. So you have a little bit more resilience. So when this stuff starts swirling around, nothing's really kind of coming out that you don't want to come out and you're managing it pretty well in the best way that you possibly can. It's not gonna take away your frustration, just means it's not gonna spill out over everybody else and it's not gonna have a negative impact overall. So let me share my screen and we'll kind of get started with this. So everything we do today is going to be about how you not get to this point. That's what it's gonna be about. How do you manage that it's kind of stress level. How do you manage all the stuff that's coming at you? And right now, there's a lot of stuff coming at you. There's a lot of things that are drastically different about what we have to do and a lot of different demands that are on us emotionally, in our personal lives, in our work lives, and everything else. And we have natural concerns with all the things that are going on with COVID-19. So we have a lot of that. So we're just going to get to what burnout is and what it's not. What is not is it's not stress, okay? Stress is one level, and then we got burnout's entirely something different. So burnout's really kind of a complex reaction to stress. It's how you really kind of manage an awful lot of stress. So it's really just kind of giving an awful lot, but you're not putting anything back in. So Definition of burnout is a really good one. A constant depletion of mental, physical, and emotional energy without any expected needs are being met. Meaning you're not getting what you need emotionally, physically, or even mentally. You're not giving that to yourself. That's not being met. You're just giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And as caregiver, as being a therapist, I give. I give a lot. 
Uh, and if I don't manage that, I'm not going to be there for my next client. I know that. So I've had to learn that. How do I separate work from family life? How do I separate family from work life? So I'm not bringing both of those over. That's kind of something that, that is a learned skill and takes time, takes energy. But if you don't learn it, this is what happens. It burns you out. You're constantly doing that, constantly giving without giving anything to yourself. So just a nice kind of graphic with stress versus burnout. Uh, stress, we kind of know, fight or flight kind of stuff. We know that. Uh, it's absolutely something that happens. We all have it. We're never going to get rid of it. We're biologically developed to actually have it. It's functional. But if we have too much and it's chronic, that's where it becomes something that really is not healthy at all. And that leads us to burnout. Burnout's on the other side of this. So it's a reaction to chronic stress, meaning you're not dealing with it very much, or it's just something that's chronic. It's like being in lockdown, right? Being in lockdown is a chronic condition right now. So it's a kind of how do we manage that? So, and it's draining. I think we've all felt that, that's for sure. That's kind of there. And we're giving high emotional output. So if we actually care about the things we're actually involved in, we're going to have that high emotional output. We're going to give a lot. And it's a negative cycle. We can get into that negative cycle and it's a spiral that just dips down and there's nothing. It feels like there's nothing you can do about it. So there's a lot of stuff that's way out of balance, especially with burnout, because you just feel the need to give and give and give. And you're like, I have no idea how to give any more. And I have no idea how to get out of this. That's kind of like what burnout's really about. And being in burnout is, it's not fun. Honestly, it ruins everything, it ruins absolutely every piece of your life. Everything seems out of balance. Everything seems to have a negative twist on things. You kind of feel like you're blown around by the wind. Whatever life kind of throws at you, it just, it sucks. It's just throwing, you know, dirt and rocks at you and it's not throwing anything good. So if you kind of think you're in burnout or any of these symptoms seem to be uh, something you're experiencing, and some of them are quite normal. But if you're experiencing a lot on this list, you might be kind of going through some burnout. Chronic fatigue, you're tired all the time. All of the anger, self-criticism, negative thoughts, all of the stuff that revolves around sort of that cognitive piece, none of it's any good. If you're not thinking positively, you're not kind of thinking in a balanced kind of way or even an objective kind of way, that's something that's there. Frustration levels. Um, constantly feeling like you're under siege. You can't get out from under it. That kind of there. Frequent headaches. Now, that's something that, depending on your health situation, it might be something that might be one of the first precursors. But I know a lot of people that get easily frustrated, but they also kind of have headaches that happen too. Um, GI kind of issues. That's something that's associated with a lot of this stuff too. Weight loss or weight gain. Right now, a lot of us are kind of probably gaining a little weight because we're at home and the snacks are really easily available. I know I've put on a little bit of stuff, but that's sort of normal. I'm not going through burnout. I'm just kind of, I like cupcakes. That's just kind of how it is. But if it's associated with stress levels and you're kind of doing that too, and it's just associated with weight loss or weight gain, it's just a symptom, it may not be anything, but when you stack on a lot of these other symptoms, it could be something that you kind of have to look at, especially if it's weight loss. Lack of sleep, a big one. Okay, see how we're going in kind of an order of hierarchy here as we kind of go down the list. Sleeplessness, your ability to sleep will kind of dictate an awful lot. And if you're not sleeping well, we kind of have to figure out why. And if you do sleep well, that's kind of a good thing. But if you're not sleeping well, that's going to make everything else that much more heightened. Because if we're not rested, our brains aren't rested, and we're just going to have high emotional output. Depression is also one of those, and it can get worse from there. So red flag time is if you're kind of having that inability to sleep, and it's just not just normal. I mean, we're talking a couple of days here. We're talking weeks. You just can't find yourself having restful sleep. You can't get to sleep. And also when you get to sleep, you wake up, you can't get back to sleep. That's kind of a big deal. 
Um, so just feeling hopeless, uh, feeling under siege, this is kind of part of that as well. You have trouble concentrating, you have trouble going ahead and doing the things you need to do because of these intrusive thoughts come in and you're kind of all worried about all kinds of different things. And we all have different worries. It's just your lack of ability to actually kind of filter some of that stuff out so you can focus. So, and if you're going to help go ahead and overeat or compensate in some other kind of way that's not healthy, that's something there too. Um, and self-destructive thoughts uh, that are kind of intrusive. You can't control them. They come in uh, and it can be rapid, rapid thoughts, um, which also can kind of interfere with your ability to sleep. That's something that's there too. And on the top of the scale, definitely thoughts of, of, of death or suicide. That can happen too, especially if it goes on way too long and then it's crunch time. You got to get yourself safe. So compassion fatigue is something that's a little bit different. Okay. It's kind of burnout, but we also have trauma on top of it. And if you're kind of in one of those professions where you hear stuff that you can't unhear, you see stuff you cannot unsee, and you even reading stuff that you can't unread, that's kind of traumatic. Um, and you can have vicarious trauma if you're dealing with people that also have trauma. So if you're hearing it as a therapist, I can get that. If you're working in an ER, you can see that. You can hear people's stories. You're kind of exposed to it. Uh, even just working in a hospital and somebody dies and they code and you do everything you can, that's something that you can, you can definitely have some trauma over, especially over time. Okay. And it's vicarious. You're not really kind of experiencing their trauma. You're kind of hearing about it, seeing about it, reading about it, or you're kind of seeing it happen around you. Those are things that are very traumatic. Again, Compassion fatigue is probably one of the worst things to actually experience because it's definitely depleting, but you got trauma on top of this stuff and it's not a good situation at all. Um, in fact, it's probably one of the, the high marks of, of people leaving jobs and people kind of getting really, really frustrated at jobs or getting, uh, getting fired, quitting, all that kind of stuff. Um, so compassion fatigue is really burnout plus trauma. You got both and they come together as a package not a good situation. So if you have trauma already, compassion fatigue is easier to get into. Just keep that as an FYI. So if you have that in your background or you know somebody who has that in their background, compassion fatigue is easier to get into. So, but we can definitely prevent a lot of this stuff or manage it in a really, really good way. And how do we do that? This is kind of where the rubber beats the road for a lot of this. Okay, so now that you have some ideas to what you're dealing with, how do we actually gonna go ahead and treat it? Now, it really kind of depends on how you really look at things. So really the mindset is, is kind of answering the question, who are you? But you're not defined by your job. That's first and foremost. So if you happen to be, I, I am a therapist, but it's not the sum total of what I am. It's one thing that I do. It's one part of my life. It's a big part of my life, but it's not necessarily everything that defines me. So I have to make that mental separation between that. I'm a father. I'm a brother. Um, I'm an uncle. Uh, I have all these other things that are kind of probably meaningful, just as meaningful, if not more. Um, so I have all these different kind of roles that I play. And just knowing that I have my job is one of those roles, that makes it that much easier for me. Um, so knowing that kind of coming in, that's just one piece. See, the mental separation is part of that too. So you can mentally separate from your job or whatever else it is that's kind of happening. So if your family stuff is traumatic, then you can go to work and you kind of know that you're just, yep, this is my, my stuff. And you can make that mental separation. So really kind of going along with that, what's your goal? So if you're a student, your goals are totally different than mine would be but I have work goals. I have my own personal life uh, that are goals. Uh, I have my relationships I need to manage. So what are your goals within each one of those things? If you're going back to school, that's something that you have to think about, okay? Um, at work, what is your goal with work? Do you just wanna kinda get by or do you wanna thrive at work too? Um, for your own personal life, uh, for your own self-development, where are you? What are your goals for yourself? Do you just want to be stagnant or do you want to learn something and kind of have that? And do you want the same thing for your relationships too? 
your intimate relationships, your friendships, all the things that you have going on, especially coworkers as well, the, all the relationships you have, what are the goals that you have for all of that too? So this is the mindset going in. So this is sort of having that kind of on the forefront, getting you outside of some of that stress level. What are your goals with all of this? So, and really kind of what's the most important thing in your life? Just mentally answer that question for yourself. What's the most important thing in your life? Just think of that answer. I'm going to click to the next slide. That's the answer to that question. As a therapist, I need that to be the answer to your question, especially if we're dealing with compassion fatigue or we're dealing with burnout or just dealing with stress. We're just dealing with that. You're the most important person in this equation here. It's not anybody else's stress. It's yours. It's you're the one who probably needs to deal with something. You're the one who needs to kind of cope with something. You're the one who has it. Nobody else is going to get you out of that. It's you, what you need and what you want for yourself. That's the most important thing. So if your answer was something a little bit different, and it may be, and it's totally okay, it's totally fine, just contemplate that for just a little bit and just see that because... I, I had to make that mental shift too. Does it make me a better parent? Yeah, absolutely. If I'm hungry and I haven't eaten, how am I supposed to go ahead and deal with everybody else? No, I got to deal with me first. I got to get myself right in order to deal with everybody else and make sure that I'm at my best. You see how that leads into the mindset? So now my goals for everything else are nice in line and I can do my best at what I have. So the most important intervention you can do is take care of you. So what you need to do at any given moment in time, to take care of that stress level. Self-care works. And however many people we have on today, that's how many different kind of uh, things we have. And there's an infinite different kind of uh, ways of actually managing self-care, whatever it is that you define for yourself, whatever it is is meaningful for you. That's what's going to be your own self-care. Whatever gets that stress level, down. That's important. So it could be just sitting out on the back porch on your sun porch and drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. That could be it. That could be great. It could be something else. It could be going for a walk in the morning. It could be taking the dog for a walk. It could be anything. It could be, you know, doing yoga. It could be anything in the world, whatever it is that kind of gets that stress level down and gets you back to, to doing you and doing you at the top that you can be. So just know that this is also part of that mindset. You're the most important person in this equation, okay? And taking care of others, it makes you able to take care of them in the best way possible. It should absolutely be non-negotiable. So if you tell your significant other, hey, I got to take care of myself, guess what? That should be non-negotiable. The answer should be absolutely go for it. It should be something that's non-negotiable for you to take care of yourself. That should also be non-negotiable. Just like it's non-negotiable, like uh, brush your teeth twice a day. <laughs> it's really kind of non-negotiable. We just kind of do it, but it's not the most pleasant thing to do, but we still do it because we know the consequences if we don't. Self-care should be the same way. Same kind of thing. So that's kind of also the mindset. It's also kind of there, but also when you go into this, if you're not taking care of yourself, definitely make it a priority to do so. Now it becomes how. How do we do this? Okay, cool. And like I said, it's anything. Take time for you. Schedule it in and schedule it first. That should be the first thing. Okay. Now, again, there's other priorities and other things that kind of get in the way, but it should be something where you have to dedicated time to do that. And my list is definitely in the order of importance. Okay. So it's not just sort of haphazard and just kind of running around. And it's all based on scientific research that tells you cortisol levels will drop if you do all these things. Or if you just do one of them, that's okay. You're still going to have drops in cortisol. Exercise is definitely the one thing that is kind of the big one. It will reset pretty much everything. And if you're doing that for 20 minutes, three times a week, awesome. Now, if walking isn't enough to get out of all the energy and kind of reset the system, guess what? Run. It doesn't matter if you're kind of having a tough time running. Run. Run. Okay, so if you're not getting that energy out, definitely get that energy out in a bigger way other than walking. But do some type of exercise, get off your butt, and definitely do something uh, uh, exercise related. 
now in order to kind of also kind of reset the system it goes ahead and all that stress level will cause some tension so the next kind of things are things that release that tension those are things that are really really important so if you stretch stretch before exercise okay stretch afterwards yoga is a really good one it's also really good for trauma actually the new research out is that it's just as effective as for trauma as doing talk therapy there's actually specific classes for trauma and yoga doing some breathing techniques now it might also go along with meditation but if you just do some deep breathing for like five minutes definitely why do you think smokers say that they're they're kind of like relaxed after they have a cigarette it's not just nicotine they're doing this you do that for 10 minutes i definitely guarantee you you're going to be feeling differently at the end of all of that meditation is also something that's really important too so you take some time out just to kind of refocus your mind and kind of get into that and there's all different kinds of meditation now the next one is hugs that's not an acronym that's actually getting hugs so that's actually hugging people why because we know oxytocin kills cortisol it's the one thing in the world that we kind of have access to that can kill it and kill it right away because so once we get the oxytocin it's called the cuddle hormone for a reason the oxytocin is there it's kind of something we can actually actively kind of initiate ourselves so if we're doing that we can get hugs and the more stressed you are maybe the more hugs you need what's wrong with that honestly simple really easy to do especially if you have a significant other hey guess what i need more hugs no brainer honestly an easy thing to do so definitely get the oxytocin now another thing with oxytocin is if you're kind of talking to people that are important to you people that you love people that you care about having that social connection is also really important so that's also an important thing to realize you're getting oxytocin when you're connecting with people that's a really good thing for you to do okay now the rest of it yes eat right mm, if we don't eat right guess what our bodies aren't going to react as well as they should that's just part of it have fun have some gratitude because if you're always constantly bombarded with stuff gratitude is probably one of the most difficult things to do when you're in that moment but it's also one thing that if you start off with things your gratitude that you're grateful for you can start off with that list it might be hard for you to start that list but once we keep that ball rolling there's going to be a lot of things you're going to think about and your attitude is going to change once you get down that line so definitely kind of do that have fun so don't forget to have fun don't forget to play don't forget to laugh don't forget to watch something funny on tv laughter also kills cortisol just does so that we know actually has a really good effect on this human system when you laugh and you have fun it gets rid of stress levels it just does and you can initiate this stuff anytime you want in whatever way you want one of the more important things and it, we can't just kind of it, gloss over it is being able to separate and compartmentalize like i said i had learned to separate work from home and home from work once i did that even mentally i had the ability to kind of go ahead and not take one or the other with me i could separate myself i could shut the door to my house and not take house stuff to my work so i can concentrate definitely the ability to compartmentalize is an important piece okay don't forget to take care of you that's the important thing here and don't forget to know what's on the other side if you don't so burnout and then if you have trauma you can get compassion fatigue and that's even worse and if you have any of that just know you can also get support okay don't forget that either so all of us if we're employed we have this available to us eap there was just a uh, for those of us who are gwinnett employees we just had a whole hr kind of thing about this they just did something on that for the eap people um, but know that most employers have this through your insurance they have an eap person you just contact your hr individual uh, and know who the eap provider typically it's it's short-term types of counseling it can also be really good information um, there's information that they have that they can give to you uh, that may help out with some of the things that you're kind of stressed about also know that if you are a student 
you can't see us if you're graduated, but we kind of have that for those of you who may have friends or you may have a student or those faculty and staff members, you kind of know students that are kind of stressed out or kind of experiencing something that, that they kind of may need to talk about. Just contact us. That's the email to use. That's definitely a really good thing. And just at the bottom of the list, not that it's, you know, in any order, if you have a medical situation, take care of it. 100% in the best way that you can. I know that, you know, some things might be kind of a little bit difficult to access right now, but if you have that situation, definitely get the care that you need because that's another stressor that you can take steps to go ahead and alleviate or manage that much better um, and not get it to be uh, something that gets out of hand. So if you need that and get that medical care, definitely do so, especially your teeth. Go to the dentist too. So if you haven't done that, that's also something. All right. So um, toothaches really suck. I'm just going to say that. Uh, and it can lead you to be really frustrated. So that's just something that can happen. So just know that your dentist might have something different, especially now with COVID. But definitely take care of yourself uh, if you have a medical condition or think that you do. Definitely take care of that. And that is it. So if you guys have questions for me, you uh, can definitely go ahead and, and email me, counseling at gmercu.edu. Those are great questions. Uh, and if you do have any questions, now's the time to go ahead and ask. Cool. Nothing. How was I on time? Well, thank you, Dan. That was a fantastic presentation. and. Cool very informative so we certainly appreciate that and thank you for you know addressing our graduates our students our faculty and staff and um, what we will do for everyone is um, post this in a few days we'll make it into a YouTube link and then post it on our Griffins at home page so if you would like to revisit this session please feel free to do that if you'd like to send the link to someone in your life or anybody who you think could benefit from you know listening to today's session or other sessions as well please feel free to share those as well and uh, we'll just say the last call for questions, or if you would prefer to email down at counseling at gmercu.edu, please feel free to do that. Cool. It was very good to be here. Again, I'm passionate about this stuff, so I love doing this presentation. Uh, so um, just know it was nice to do it. Uh, and again, if you need more information, please just feel free to contact me. Well, thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us today for today's uh, Griffins at Home session. We do have another session next week if you have any children in your life. Uh, Mary Jo Pirantosi, who is one of our professors in education, will be reading bedtime stories. She did a session a few weeks ago, which was fantastic and so much fun for our little Griffins. So please feel free to spread the word. Registration is on the Griffins at Home website and you can access it if you're on camp in, in the campus community um, through the portal. Or if you're a graduate, you can access the, the link through the website as well and through our emails that go out. And so I'd like to thank you all today for being here. I hope that you are all staying safe and well, and it's nice to see some familiar faces and uh, we miss you. So take care everyone and thanks for joining us today. <laughs>